<laughs> hey, I'm Gary Kor from CigarAdvisor.com, and we're here with Shane Spiel. How's it going? The original cigar guitar maker man, <laughs> cigar box guitar. You know, Shane, you've been doing this now for what, 25, 25 years? 25 years now. All right, and then we're in his studio, his little his workshop. I'm also here with John Pulo, who will be joining us later. And, um, you know, tell us a little bit about what you do, how you got into this. Well, why you even want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, an old time old time style cigar box guitar. This is what the old blues guys used to play back. You know, we're talking turn of the century up until you know the 1920s, 1930s, uh, when people were too poor to buy their own guitar. They would take an empty cigar box, jam a stick through it. And put two strings, maybe three if they were being fancy, and uh, that's what they play. They get an old broken bottleneck, like this bottleneck right. slide I have here, and that's mm -hmm. what they would. And uh, 25 years ago, I was uh, smitten by the blues. Okay, before yeah, I that, love the blues. Yeah, <laughs> before that, I was a heavy metal guy until I heard Jimi Hendrix's Red House. Oh, okay. And that just sent me on this path back in song. time over and over again. Um, and I wanted to find that sound that was kind of one step deeper than the old Delta blues. Mm. And I came across these stories of guys that were building their own guitars because I couldn't afford it. And I said, that's the sound I wanted. 25 years ago, I built my first out of a, an old Swisher Sweet Box. Uh, we'll show, I'll show that to you later. Okay. And um, since then, I've been building these and I've uh, probably made over 2,000 since. Wow, that's amazing. And we're talking like ultra minimalist. I mean, there's not even a bridge, it's just a screw. There's, you know, yeah, it's, it's a screw. just a bolt right there. And there's there. a screw right there, a bolt right there. And. Um, Pretty much. Now, where do you get the uh, wood for the next? Like, you know, that's nothing but that. a stick of poplar from Home Depot or Lowe's. Okay. Um, you go to the craft wood section, and uh, they've got poplar one by two by three. Okay. This is starting to be shaped into a neck, but it's still just a piece of wood. That's it. And it goes right through the box. I see. And what I do, and we'll, we'll get into this, but mm -hmm. I notch the neck out so that the box fits in like a puzzle piece. I see. And uh, it, the neck being that it goes the whole way through, it's called the old spike fiddle tradition of building. It's the way they make, they made the old banjos where mm -hmm. because the neck goes through the box, it acts as bracing. And so that lid doesn't cave in or anything right. else. Because some boxes are obviously not as good for making guitars correct as others because of just the, the construction what well, are there specific boxes you like to work with uh, specific brands i guess I should say um that, better yeah boxes there, than there are uh in in the uh world of making cigar boxes there's a couple different styles one is called is it boit boit natural what natu natu nature yeah. Yeah. yeah where the uh it's it's the sides of the box in fact i've got a i've got an old or not an old but a back box here where the sides will come down around the edges i've made these made guitars out of these but quite honestly i like a box that has just a nice simple flat box lid to it where it's just simple, flat, nice, thin plywood, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's what I prefer. I love these Padron boxes. Right. They, they're huge, uh, the Padron 7000s, and uh, that's what I'm working with this week, but I'll use anything. My favorite of all time is the Macanudo Portofino Cafe box. Okay. Um, <laughs> later on, I'll show you the, I built one out of this box back in 1996, and I still perform with it. Wow. Now, we'll show it later, but it's, I'm wearing a hole through it. It looks like it's turning into <laughs> Willie Nelson's. Nelson, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tiny wood shop. This is nothing but a little shed in my backyard. And the entire shed has just been converted into my wood shop. Everything in here is set up just for cigar box guitar building. 
Gary, this is an overview of um, how I build these. You, there are free plans online, and I want to encourage people to go to CigarBoxNation.com. It's a social network that I created many years ago, and we've put free plans on there. I do have a book coming out with even right. more specific plans. Called The book will be called Poor Man's Guitar. But for right now, check out CigarBoxNation.com. Um, what you do is you start out with an empty cigar box like this. Um, there's nothing really big particular about it other than I like it. it had a nice thin lid and it's a flat lid that fits down in and I've got my one by two by three stick of poplar now I've cut this down to 32 inches long and what I want to do is I want to notch out this neck so that it fits in this cigar box and I want to notch out the cigar box so in Martha cooking <laughs> demonstration style, I'll show you the pieces that have been what I've done to it. First of all, I've got the box and this will be the second part. I've cut a little sound hole in here. You can cut it in the middle here or you can do a fancy uh, violin hole type. Either way, that's kind of part of the creativity of this. You can have a lot of fun. And what I do, uh, don't fall on me, <laughs> I notch out the box here so that the stick fits perfectly in the box. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's a nice tight fit. Over the years I've made my own little uh, templates and things like that, but just laying the stick beside the box and tracing around it is an easy way to do it. So we have that, and we have the, the uh, sound hole here. Right. Next thing I want to do is work on the neck itself, which goes through the box. And as you can see, I notched out this neck. I use my table saw. And what I do is I turn the neck over, and the table saw is here, and I just run it until it notches I stroke see. after stroke after stroke. And what that does is, if measured correctly, this lid will fit like a perfect little puzzle there you go. into here. And I have a process of doing it where the box lid only touches the neck at the beginning, at the end, and I know the bridge is going to be right here. So mm. I notch it just a little higher there. And uh, that allows the rest of this lid to vibrate and to amplify the uh, strings vibrating. Right. Uh, so this becomes the resonator for I it. I see. That's very interesting. Yeah. And then I cut down the headstock here. I notch out the headstock here. Okay. Drill in where my tuners are going to go. This sure. one's going to have three strings on it. Mm -hmm. And I drill a little notch here because I use these... I use these bolts right. as my nut, and I have a bolt here as the bridge. Um, what I like to do on mine, for this one, I used my wood burning pen right here. Ah, and I wood burned the lines in here. See, these aren't real frets. You right. can make a cigar box guitar with real frets. Sure. But for this, I just needed the lines because this is played with the slide. So right. you, you're not so pushing the string. The string. High. Yes. You don't really need, use the frets very much. All you need is for that slide to make contact with the strings, mm -hmm. and it changes the uh, changes the note. So I've got the neck cut out. I've got the wood burn lines in there. The holes drilled. What I'll do is add some regular guitar tuners. I get these guitar tuners from cbgitty.com. Okay. That's cbgitty.com. Mm -hmm. And I'll install the tuners here. Okay. And then it's just a process of taking everything, putting it together, and gluing it. And uh, when it's done, you have this whole instrument that everything's so tight <laughs> that it's tough to do fast on the camera. But when it's done, it'll be all together like this. The strings come up through the back here, sure. as you see here. This becomes the anchor for the strings. You see oh, the string okay. balls are right there. Right. And I use A, D, and G strings. Okay. Um, and they come up through. 
to the tuners. Now, this is a direct descendant of the way they did it back in the Depression era. Uh, except for in the Depression era, most of the guys would use a broomstick. Right. Okay? And they would just cut a hole in the box here and here, shove a broomstick through, put one or two strings. And that was their guitar. Um, so this is kind of a little more fancy, but I, you know, it's it, it plays awesome. I came up with this design um, pretty much 1994, okay. and uh, since then I really haven't changed it. The, the cigar box guitar has gone through a renaissance, and people are making them, and I'll show you different crazy guitars that were made, different pickups and everything else by other mm. builders worldwide. For myself, I'm still in love with this simple design. Mm. Now, do you put um, pickups in these? I know some of them you said have, have a piezo. Yes, or... I actually, um, in fact, I'll pull this out. I have, over the years, tried so many different pickups. I've put everything from, you know, humbucker pickups in, mm, you yeah. know, old Dan Electro lipstick tube pickups. Right. For these that I've been doing, I use a what is a what's called a piezo rod pickup and this is the type of pickup that would be used in a regular acoustic guitar and i don't have the rod pickup in front of me here but what happens is I'm gonna take this out the bridge is going to go right here remember i said this is notched a little higher right well there's a little worm notch in there the piezo rod pickup will fit right in there i glue mm -hmm. it in and it's making direct contact with the underside of the box lid. Those strings are running over the box and vibrating it. And then I even add an acoustic guitar preamp wow. to give it the proper sound because I want it to sound just like a cigar box guitar would sound. Mm -hmm. So you got to go through a few <clears throat> little extra steps for it. but. A piezo pickup on its own never sounds that great, but adding a preamp and even just a simple, I mean, these are like $18 at cbgiddy.com. Really? Yeah, and it's, it just, it changes it, and I've done major festivals mm -hmm. with this setup. Simple stick-through box, piezo rod, and preamp. I've opened up for um, Jackal, <laughs> I mean, yeah. the Kentucky Headhunters. Yeah. Uh, oh. Done my own blues festivals. Mm -hmm. This simple setup, and it sounds fantastic. It's full, and uh, I have no complaints. And all of this, again, everything I do, what it becomes is this puzzle, where it all just fits together in the little notches that I make. It's not only a great hobby, yeah, but it's a very affordable hobby. Absolutely right? affordable. I mean, the simple setup here. Let's say you go to your your cigar store, you go wherever. You can find these boxes at just everywhere. Sure. Because we know how popular cigars are. Yes, they are. Okay, and That's then... a smoke shop, right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then you have the one by two stick of Poplar, which is right. just a couple bucks. Sure. Tuners, which are a couple bucks, and mm -hmm. guitar strings. There really isn't much to it. Mm -hmm. But there's even a bigger magic that happens and that is sitting here in the wood shop mm -hmm. now out here is kind of my little sanctuary right and i'll come out here at night and be building and i i'm a big fan of java cigars okay. and so sure. i'll sit and have a cigar and just start building um put some old blues on the radio mm -hmm. and uh there's there's just something beautiful about it However, unlike building furniture or building crafts in the wood shop, you're building a guitar. Mm. And what you're creating is something that will breathe and sing when you're done. Uh, it, there's nothing like it. I mean, as, as, you're, as I'm sitting here sanding the neck mm. and I'm rounding these corners of the neck, I keep thinking to myself, this thing is going to join me on stage. <laughs> My hand is going to fit right in there. Mm. So it just adds that extra bit of zen to yes. it as I'm doing it. <laughs> um, between that, have enjoying this cigar, um, I, quite honestly, this is the greatest uh, escapism I've ever found. Yeah. Between Well, next to 
performing on stage. Well, of course, everybody loves that. Well, so the, this has these. This one has C holes. Yes. So this would be an, for acoustic, and you didn't put them in this because this is, has the piezo. Is that yeah, why? Yeah. But there is a sound hole here. Oh, sure. And uh, what I did with this, if you notice. I reinforced the back here. I had a piece of an old maple um, yardstick, and I glued that to the back here because I didn't want this to be like a bow where it just mm -hmm. pulled up see, after. See, I think that gives it such great personality too. You know, that just got and nobody will ever see you this know, either. Right, but you, you know, know, it's there. You know? Yeah, <laughs> and then this hole here, in order for me to block out the wood going through, mm -hmm. this perloid piece is an old drum wrap. Okay. The old vinyl things they used to wrap drums sure, with. Sure. And I just put a piece right there. And this is the artistic side of it, where I know that when it's done and uh, whoever buys this mm -hmm. is going to have it, and it looks great. The sound still comes through because okay. I've rounded that out. Right. Um, but uh, there's so many small elements you can continue to add to these, such as, mm -hmm. I mean, I have this one. That makes I, real vintage. This is a 100-year-old box, and I wanted to make a guitar that approximated the original cigar box guitars. And the yardstick again. I have a yardstick. <laughs> the yardstick is so old, the phone number is only four digits. <laughs> Look at that. And it's a two-stringer. It's a two-string, just like so many of the originals. I see. And... Uh, I thought the Stradivarius style violin holes mm -hmm. were a perfect touch for it. It gave a great look, and but it's still that stick through a box. That's the mm -hmm. same piece of poplar from um, Lowe's. Now let me tell you a little secret I did to this one. If you look at the neck, it's darker. Right. I had a stain. I had an old um, American chestnut stain that we had used inside my house for a floor, and I had okay. some left over. But it was a little too light and a little too orange. Mm. So what I did is I took that stain and mixed it up. I took the ashes from my cigar that I was smoking. Get out. And I mixed it <laughs> with, with the stain, and it darkened it, and it just added that extra touch to it. I don't, you know, whoever buys this from me eventually, mm -hmm you know I'll, I'll tell them about it but it's kind of my little secret and that's great it just added that extra personal touch to it but yeah i mean State this is pen. notice the manufacturer of guitars here in container of couple complied with all the requirements of law every person is cautioned not to use this box for cigars again or stamp their as well. No, some of them legal mumbo jumbo they used to have some of the legal mumbo jumbo says you were only allowed to sell these cigars between five and eight cents oh. you know <laughs> but that's the reason Those days are over I think. well there's <laughs> there's also a beautiful history behind this the reason cigar box guitars became popular in the late 1800s and mm -hmm. in early 1900s is that's when cigar boxes first came about because cigars used to be transferred in barrels okay, okay. and then they passed a, a tax law in somewhere around 1849 mm -hmm. uh, um, and said that cigars had to be sent in smaller boxes so they would all have a tax stamp. Now, we've all seen cigar boxes, and there's this right, sticker. Stamp. Yeah. That's a tax stamp, and mm -hmm. that is essential, and that's why they did the boxes in the first place. So you had these boxes, like this one was meant to hold 50 cigars, yeah. and others were meant to hold 20. But they all had the tax stamp on there. Yeah. So cigars finally started going out in these smaller boxes, and people had these boxes everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's American ingenuity from, you know, the very poor. I need a guitar, or I need a banjo, or a fiddle, but I don't have anything. Well, here's an empty wooden box. Right. And let me see what I can make with that. And there we go. And I mean, there's nothing like the sound I gotta hear this. One hundred year old cigar box. Where'd that slide of mine go? Here it is. Here it is, there it is. Okay, so you've got check this out.
sounds really good. <laughs> I mean, it really does. You that can't great fake that sound. Yeah. You can't get that Don't you sound. Think so? I mean, it's really oh, true. Yeah. You know? It's that true, you know. And there's no factory made guitar that will deliver a tone like a cigar box guitar, especially one with an old wooden box like this. Is this like a D and an A or? This is a, a D and a G string. A D and a G, okay. And so it's tuned. You like think, the wound strings, I noticed too. Uh, yeah, because they project more. They if do, you okay. do the high, the, the unwound, sizzle, right? the yeah. unwound ones seem, seem to be whiny. Like okay. they're too high. Right. I've had some like that. But you get a little more grit yeah. I guess, out of it too, yeah. And for this one, in order to tell where I was going, I have old hand cut carpet tacks. <laughs> and that's giving my 3, 5, 7, right. 9, 12 frets right there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Now, have you played this on stage? No, I haven't. I just built this last week. Oh, wow. Yeah. Looks like you've had it for I know. <laughs> All right. So I'll do things like, as I'm hitting flea markets looking for the old cigar boxes, mm -hmm. if you look here, I'll also collect the old yardsticks. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, and I've the older, the better. I always try to find the ones like that that have the smaller phone numbers because you know how old and are they most are. of these made of maple or are they nah, pine that's or probably just pine up. or something yeah. but, oh, look at this uh, one yeah that's interesting so i haven't gotten into these yet but these just add a cool little element and it looks like a fretboard yeah you know i think it's great now, when you play on stage, and you know, I notice when you know you go see a band, uh -huh. the guitar player usually has like six guitars, you know, in a yes. rack. Do you bring a whole bunch of different? My show goes. I'm you? usually showing up with anywhere between five and seven guitars. However, this past week, uh, my band did a show in a small, tiny hole in a wall bar in mm -hmm. downtown York, Pennsylvania. Okay. And as I was headed out the door, I just got this idea. Let me just bring one guitar. We had a three-hour show. Let me just bring one guitar, and it was one almost identical to this. A Macanudo? Yeah, a Macanudo, <laughs> three strings, no frets. And I did the entire three-hour show with this and only had the, the low string break on me on the very last I was going to say, song. what do you do when you, know, you break the string? Yeah. I keep going. Okay. I, well, you we only need two anyway. We right? were doing, <laughs> our very final song was Roadhouse Blues oh, wow. by The Doors. Okay. Nice. And the low string broke in the first verse. We continued uh, that song for another 10 minutes, and I still did it on two strings. I love it. But, That's great. Yeah, I mean, I, but in concert, it depends. I do um, sort of unplugged shows sometimes, or I'll do electric shows. And in my electric shows, I have guitars with crazy pickups in there. Wow. I'm amps blazing, distorted mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. And the thing is, the rest of the band is a jug band. I mm -hmm. wash tub bass, um, uh, hand percussion, and harmonica. And it's just absolutely absurd, but it's kind of like we're playing the music we want to play, and it's somewhere between Delta Blues and ACDC. Right. Wow. <laughs>